Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com. This is episode 43 of Learn Lightroom 5. In this episode, I'm going to show you guys how you could achieve this vintage film look with Lightroom. Now, most of you guys know that I sell Lightroom preset packages on my website. And throughout those packages, there's various looks you could get, all different types of looks you could get with one click. What I wasn't aware of until recently, there's a lot of folks that buy my preset packages and they kind of reverse engineer them to figure out what I did to achieve that look. It's a good way to learn how to use Lightroom. Unfortunately, it's not always readily apparent what I did to get that look. So, I really have no problem showing you guys how to do it. And the first thing we're going to do, or we're going to tackle in this episode, is that vintage film look. And this is the look I'm talking about. This is reminiscent maybe of pocket cameras and Instamatic cameras from the late 60s, early 70s. And it's a really cool retro look you could apply to lifestyle images, and portrait, portraiture, stuff like that. And we're going to use this image to do it with. And what you should do is just process your images normally, uh, as you normally would. Just bring it to this point and you consider yourself done. Well, now we're going to add this vintage look. What I want you to do though is in the basic panel, in the shadow section, this film back then didn't really show absolute black. It was more gray. So open up your shadows. That's Just bring it somewhere between 60 and 70 and open up your shadows. And then in the vibrance and saturation, bring those down just like minus, between minus 5 and minus 10. Again, don't worry about getting it exact. So what we're doing is we're just bringing a little bit of the color out of it and we're opening up the shadows a little bit to make sure there's nothing absolutely black in the shot. Most of the heavy lifting in this uh, effect is done with the tone curve. Now, if you click here, you'll see there's sliders here. This is the tone curve. If you click again, the sliders disappear. Now it's actually a point curve, and it acts just like the point curve in curves in Photoshop. And that's what we want. So make sure that this is um, not showing any sliders here. Just click there. Now what we're going to do is go to the lower left-hand corner of this curve, and we're going to just drag this straight up. And hopefully you can see there's some uh, very light boxes outlined here. And this first box, we're going to bring it about three quarters of the way up to the first line. Next, we're going to go over to the highlights area, and we're going to drag that straight down about halfway between the top and that first line. Now we're going to add two points. You can see where the lines are intersecting right here. We're going to drag the curve straight down on top of that point of intersection. Next, we're going to go over to the highlights area, and we're similarly going to grab the line and we're going to drag it straight up though to that point of intersection. So this is the kind of curve we just made in the RGB channel. I forgot to mention that. Make sure you're on the RGB channel. Next we're going to do something similar to the blue channel. So you do that drop down, put it on blue. We're going to bring this one up again about three quarters of the way up. Now this one Whereas last time with the RGB channel, we brought it halfway down, we're just going to bring it about a quarter of the way down. Now, before we drag this down right on top of the point of intersection, this time just drag it just above, not quite on top. And this uh, highlights area, we're going to do that exactly the same. We're just going to, as we did on the RGB channel in that, we're dragging it straight up so it's right on top of the point of intersection. So we're done with the blue channel. Now we go to the red channel. Now all we're going to do here is add a slight S curve. So grab the curve right around here and just pull down just slightly and grab the curve up here and just push it up just slightly. Now we just added a slight S curve to the red channel. Now we're done with the tone curve. Now drop down to detail and just make sure your sharpening and luminance noise sharpening and luminance noise reduction are all the way down to zero we don't want to add any sharpening no no noise reduction necessary now go to effects and I like a slight vignette on the shot that's personal choice it's up to you whether you want to do it and go to grain and add some grain because we're simulating a film look and it's to your, again, your own personal choice. I'm going to bring it up to 40. Yours might be 20. It might be 60. Whatever you like. Now, 
The next thing, we're going to kind of give this a, a color tone. And we're going to do that in the split toning section. Now, as you can see here, there's a highlight section, a shadow section, and there's two sliders in each section. There's a hue and saturation slider in each section. If you don't see that, there's a little expose triangle, they call that, right there. Click on that so you're seeing these sliders. Just make sure you see them. Now, I'm going to temporarily turn saturation up in the highlights area all the way up so you can see the color we're working with here. What we're going to do is I want you to bring the hue slider up to around 50 or so. Um, again, you don't have to be super exact. Just get it close. It's going to um, give us this kind of yellowish orange tint to the picture. But we're going to bring the saturation down now to a more realistic level of around 10. Similarly now for the shadow section, I'm going to temporarily put the saturation up so you could see the colors we're dealing with. And I'm going to bring it up to, I'd say around 250 or so. And it's going to give this kind of, um, kind of bluish purple tint to the shot. But again, we're going to bring the saturation down to a manageable or more realistic, I should say, uh, reading of 10. Now you can see it, it gave this really kind of cool tone to this shot. I, when I say cool, I mean like it's, you know, neato, groovy cool, not cool like in color balance or white balance cool. So it's, it's got that kind of look to it now. Um, one thing I want to make a note of, I mentioned that this is a yellowish orange and this was a bluish purple. Those are complementary colors and those of you that follow me and you know or maybe my students you know I talk a lot about complementary colors and how important they are in photography and orange is the complement of blue and yellow is the complement of purple so whenever you could incorporate those in an image it usually makes that image more compelling so we did that with the split toning as simple as that now we're pretty much done with the image. The last thing I do like to do though is I like to add a little exposure to the shot. So just, you know, all the sliders are at zero except exposure. Bring exposure a lot. And uh, just paint over your your subjects generally like that. Now that might be a little bit too much. And again, this is like your own personal taste. Um, just bring it down a little bit. Uh, something like that, maybe 0.3 in this case. Every image is going to be different. And that's it. This is this retro look. There is a before and there is after. And we could show them side by side like that. So that is, again, the um, kind of um, vintage film look. And that's how you do it. And in future episodes of Learn Lightroom 5, I'll do some different looks. If anyone has anything specific they want me to do, just leave it down in the comments below and I'll see if I could do a video on it. I'd like to take this time to thank everyone that watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Thank you very much. And those of you that have purchased my Lightroom presets, I really do appreciate it. Thanks. All right, I'll talk to you guys soon.